two new landmarks added to the map. Are they viable? Some nifty new ice blocks we can loot up too. Plus, the Winter Royale is coming up with three different formats. What are the best strategies you guys should use? Hmm. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend. Come on. The one and only Keith Allen. How you guys doing? Hey, listen, hope your spirits are up because we are winners. You are leaders, okay? Remember that, all right? Don't let anybody affect your mood. You are in control of your mood. Don't blame anybody else for your joy, for your happiness, for your peace, all right? You got to continue to be focused, be, continue to be driven, continue to be persistent and consistent. You could do anything. I'm telling you, you could do anything. I believe in you guys. Connect with me on my new Insta, which is at your motivation. Motivation guy. I want to inspire you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. You know, there's a lot of new items like snowball launchers, you know, snowmen, and thank the Lord, lightsabers too aren't in arena or in competitive playlists. So we won't be touching on them too much. But for all the things that'll affect your points and positions on the leaderboards, yo, we got you covered. My question for you guys is this. What's your favorite part of the new update? You know, for me, it's got to be the separate loot pools. There's nothing wrong with adding wacky and possibly imbalanced things to the game, but keep them in like casual modes. Thankfully, they did that this time. But let me know in the comments like what you guys enjoyed the most about this patch. And if you want to ensure peak performance in the tourney this weekend, ProGuys.com can help you out. On our site, you can play with pros who are going to tell you guys exactly how to fix your weaknesses and improve in-game. Plus, we've got courses by World Cup winners like Mongo and Lechi where you can learn straight from the best. Check out ProGuys.com or follow the link in the description to get started. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to sit back, relax, and you better get my favorite candy. Come on now, who's had it this week? I know I have. <laughs> it's that bunch of crunch. and Let's get this going. So first up, the new landmarks. If you haven't checked them out or if you just don't know if they're viable or not, let's go over the two recently added spots real quick. Just southwest of Retail Row and north of the mountains, they're Shiver Inn. You know, I love when Epic adds new themes to their locations, and this ice hotel is no exception. It's beautiful. But, like, how's the loot? Is it worth landing at? Hmm. Well, there are a total of seven floor loot spawns, three chests, one ice freezer, 14 ice blocks, and four ammo crates here. The mix of material isn't too bad either. Plenty of trees nearby for wood, and some rocks, and a few vehicles parked out in front for brick and metal. But that loot, though, seems pretty bad, right? Well, to be honest with you, actually, it is and it isn't, if that makes any sense at all. For solos, it can definitely work. Three chests and seven floor loot spots is kind of on the low end. But remember, those 14 ice blocks have a chance at weapons, too. And they're always blue, rarity, or higher. The worst part, though, is like how long they take to break. <laughs> All right, so there are like a few on the roof that you can get a bit quicker by breaking the floors they're on, but most of the ice blocks are gonna have you swinging like crazy. So because of the limited loot, you're gonna have to do a lot of rotating nearby to fill up your inventory for duos and anything higher. To the east, you've got a couple of chests and some more floor loot at the bunker. Then on the mountain south, there are a few more chests and loot spots you can either, you know, gather at the camp and next to the snow cone truck. And to the west, just before the pass bridge, you can scoop up a few more chests. Everything else nearby is likely to be contested, so I say that these are the only safe loot spots worth visiting. But if you're down for a fight, hey, I'm not gonna stop you. You can contest whatever you want. So, should you land here? Hmm. Despite the low chest count, it's not horrible or anything like that, but especially if you like getting a ton of fish from the ice blocks, that's the number one reason to visit this joint. So you might have players contesting you either off the drop or rotating in. Just know your rotation paths well, all right, since you might need to hit them up for extra loot. The second landmark is Crack Shots Cabin. Isn't exactly new, but somehow, you know, it's found its way into the Chapter 2 map. Located near the center of the island, this house has four floor loot spawns, three chests, and three ammo crates. Just outside the cabin, you have another two chests you can get, plus three more floor loot spots. In terms of material, mostly, they're just wood, plus a bit of brick on the outside. This cabin used to be on the old map, just north of Frosty Flights, and back then, it was a perfectly viable solo landing spot. FaZe Dubs famously qualified for the World Cup like four times landing there. But of course, the rotation path was different back then, so how does it compare this time around? On the middle island, there's plenty of loot, but that's likely to be contested off the drop. For a safer looting experience, you can always stop at the diner to the east for a few more chests. If you go south from there, you can hit up the Eagle Barracks and get some metal. Then go west and pick up the five chests near the waterfall. 
So how does this stack up? I say it's fantastic. If you're looking for a low key solo spot, with the center map location, there's a less of a chance you're gonna have to run far for the first zone, but if you're with some teammates, the loot might be insufficient and you're probably better off landing somewhere else. Before we move into the next topic, I just wanna talk about the new ice blocks and freezers. These things are absolutely terrific. The freezers are essentially chests scattered all around you can open to find fish. They emit their own unique humming noise, so you always know when there's one nearby. Then there's the ice blocks, also amazing. Sure, they do take a while to break, but you can always check to see what they're going to give before you pummel away. And the best part about this, guys, is that they give you full stacks of floppers or slurpfish. So they're 100% worth considering when deciding your rotation paths. All right, so check this out, yo. Just look at this clip. Cypher PK and Nick Merckx are rotating through Lazy Lake Island when they roll up on these ice blocks and see eight floppers. All it took was a bit of luck and several swings later for them to just leave with two stacks of the best in-game utility out there. There are those ice blocks there, plus the ones at Shiver Inn and plenty more around the map. But there's one more fantastic spot you should not sleep on, Dirty Docks. On the east side of Dirty, there's an ice factory where on the first floor, you can find a bunch of ice blocks and freezers. Some of the ice is solid and won't drop anything, but the see-through ones have items in them. Usually, you know, you can leave this spot with the great weapon and at least one stack of fish. Dirty was already a pretty good spot to begin with, and this addition, yo, it just made it better. Okay, so a subtle change was made to those mighty slurp trucks scattered all around the map. Epic didn't even mention it, but there are actually some minor implications for a competitive play we think you should know about. So before the patch, you know, these trucks would get destroyed instantly anytime a build piece was placed inside of it. So you could just put a cone down or some stairs and the truck would break. That was definitely an excellent way to get quick health or shields on the run. But as of the most recent patch, the trucks won't break with builds anymore. Might seem like a pointless change at first. You're like, whatever. But there might be some strategy choices behind this. Basically, you and your team can box up near a slurp truck during the mid or late game, like maybe during a stacked duo or a squad lobby. Your group can peek to deal damage and go for picks, and if you get tagged, perhaps someone gets sniped or something like that, boom, 100 free health just waiting for you. There are even seven slurp trucks on the map, all on roads, outlined right here. Learn these locations, guys, really well so you can implement them in your loot paths. And if you manage to find one when looking for a place to box up, set your base up around it so you've got that free health in case you need it. Slurp trucks did get buffed to give 100 health not too long ago, which is actually a great way to fill up shields for your entire team. If you're not using them already, definitely guys, you gotta use them in your rotation paths. I'm sure you already know how much of a pain it is to fill up that shield bar, so it's vital that you guys know these locations. So, you know how when you pick up a snowball, right? The camera zooms out and you can see a lot more of your surroundings. Same thing with the lightsabers. When you have one of those bad boys equipped, Everyone is loving this new field of view. It just feels so delightful to be able to see around your character a bit more, and it helps with a ton, like with those close range fights too. But it's a shame that we can't set it that way permanently. With those new items though, a lot of people are speculating Epic might be giving us the option to tweak out field vision soon. They've been so against this in the past, you know, locking us at the default, other than while in vehicles, so why else would they suddenly add two items that change FOV? I don't know, guys, it's pure speculation, you know, but nothing's confirmed. But Epic has been a lot more progressive this chapter in regards to competitive integrity and listening to the community. So hopefully they hit us with the gift for Christmas or even the new year. I think everybody will love that. All right. So with the big event coming up, let's talk about the Winter Royale format. For those that don't know, there'll be three days of dual tournaments this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Each day has a different point format. So let's talk about how you should approach them, okay? All right, so listen to this. Day one is going to be wild. Each win is gonna get 15 points and each elimination one. That's it, no additional placement points at all. For this day, the usual way most of us play won't work. Even if you survive for nearly the entire match, making it to second place, congrats, you get zero points. <laughs> if you want to place in the money, you got to go for kills. So you can probably guess Friday is going to be filled with aggression. People are going to be fighting nonstop, but if you're smart, you're going to know when to stop because getting 50 points from the win is still very significant. Our suggestion, guys, is that, you know, what we've heard some pros say that they do is to really try and frag out of spawn, maybe a bit into the mid game if you're feeling it, then take it easy for the rest of the match. 
working on gathering resources for the end game so you can play that out and go for the win. Even if you lose a few fights off spawn with 15 total matches and 4 hours to play, you should have a few games you could just throw away. During the test events that ran with this format a few days ago, the players on top all had wins under the belt. So it was crucial that you win at least once, maybe twice if you want to earn some cash. On day two, placement points get added. And you know, it's a bit more lenient than the current format we're used to. Here, you're gonna get your first placement point at 28th place with two points given out for each milestone after. This is the day where kills matter the least. With consistent placements, you can actually do quite well. So if you like, you can play passive this day. And as long as you're consistent, you still have solid results. Day three is the format closest to what they ran for the World Cup qualifiers. You get your first placement points at top 12, which isn't the easiest to accomplish. So like with day one, kills are going to matter a ton. It's not entirely impossible to do well through like passive play and earning placement points, but reaching those milestones pretty much requires making the end game every match. On this day, fight off spawn and play for the end game. I think it's pretty cool Epic is testing new competitive formats. These three are so drastically different with how they change up the way we play. Personally, you know, I think day two's format is ideal as it rewards consistency. But let me know which one you guys prefer. All right, so just a quick rundown of everything we went over. First, the new landmark, Shiver Inn and Crack Shots Cabin are both good in their own ways. I say that Shiver Inn can handle a duel with all the ice blocks and nearby loot, but the cabin is more of a quiet spot for solo drops. Ice blocks and freezers are all over the place, but most of them are at Shiver Inn and Dirty Docks. The Dirty Docks spot is pretty crazy, and you should definitely be utilizing these new features in your matches. Slurpy trucks can't even be broken by your own builds anymore, so it might be useful to box around them during the mid or late games for some free shields whenever you need them. Lastly, the first day of the Winter Royale is going to be a W key fest, so you best be ready. Day two is less about the kills and more about consistent placement, remember that, and day three is more about reaching that end game. Play around the formats and you might just win some cash. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Yo, you're gonna do well. Keep it up, don't get nervous, just stay focused on the prize. Yo, have fun, believe in yourself, stay confident because I believe in you. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta at your motivation guy. You know, we really hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES in the Fortnite item shot. When you make any sort of purchases, it just really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you like to see next on the channel. We aim to bring you guys the best daily Fortnite content. So do us a favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and showing ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.